Hello. Today it's my pleasure to talk with Professor Karl Heinz Hoffmann, mathematician and uh, the president of the Bavarian Academy of Sciences and Humanities. Welcome, Professor Hoffmann. Thank you very much. The website of the Technical University in Munich uh, collects over 70 of scientific articles written or co-authored by you that are available in open access. I would like to ask you why you decided to open your scholarly papers, why you find it attractive to put them in open access. Well, the Technical University of Munich is one of the uh, top places in, in the world, let's say uh, Germany and the world, and uh, we think that we uh, must be active worldwide. It's, uh, uh, we compare ourselves with MIT, for instance, and other big Berkeley and other big places. And uh, these universities uh, I just mentioned uh, uh, are operating worldwide. And uh, uh, we will do the same. Uh, we want to attract the best scientists worldwide to come to Munich and uh, to work in uh, our institutes and our university. And uh, so you have to be active. Uh, uh, so we have, uh, the university has a, a slogan which says, uh, a technical university is uh, at home in Bavaria, but active worldwide. Okay, I understand. So uh, uh, would you say that the major beneficiary of open access are the scholars themselves? or maybe the society in general? I would say both, uh, of course. Uh, uh, so, uh, um, yeah, so the world uh, is, comes closer and closer and uh, we, uh, we have to uh, cooperate with different uh, uh, places, different universities and institutes. Uh, Munich is not only a place for the Technical University, but also for Max Planck, the Max Planck Society, which is also a big player in, in the world. And uh, so uh, we can't uh, stop at the border of Munich. So uh, it's, uh, we also want, uh, or we feel us as a player uh, in developing science uh, worldwide. Uh some people claim today that uh, new technologies uh, made the scholarly communication completely different to, to, to what it was before in the past. Uh, do you personally think that these new technologies uh, result in a true change in quality, in essence of, of, of science communication, or maybe it's just a matter of scale? Uh, I don't think that's uh, just a matter of scale. So uh, I will not say that uh, everything has changed completely. So it's uh, developing faster than in the past and uh, there will come up a new quality in science communication and uh, collaboration among uh, different uh, places and uh, scientists. Uh so let me ask you about the Leibniz Supercomputing Center now. Uh, it was created under the auspices of, of the Bavarian Academy of Sciences and Humanities. And uh, among others, it provides uh, tools, it provides communication infrastructure that you call the Munich Scientific Network. And also it archives large amounts of, of data. And now I would like to ask you, uh, is the Leibniz Supercomputing Center actively involved in some sort of uh, open science projects? Do you support, for example, open data? Yes, uh, that's uh, definitely supported by, by our computer center. And uh, 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 digitalization, for instance, is a, is a big point uh, also, not only in natural sciences, uh, but also in the humanities, uh, so we have big storages uh, for uh, yeah, libraries and, and uh, everything which uh, uh, is important uh, for 
further development of, of, uh, of uh, science in not only in Bavaria but also in Germany so uh, and worldwide uh, so uh, Leibniz uh, computer center is uh, I think it's the fifth or sixth biggest computer center presently in the world it changes nearly every day <laughs> but uh, I think we are about number six or seven uh, presently and uh, we ha have uh, very big uh, data storage systems and uh, academy is uh, not only a place for physics and uh, chemistry, mathematics, but also for literature and yeah. uh, what, whatever you want to have. And uh, these things are uh, uh, stored in, in the Leibniz Computer Center and, and, and this will be continued in the, in the future. Uh, Professor Hoffman, you have already said that uh, today scientists have to compare to each other. Uh, and there are different tools, new metrics like impact factor, that allow to measure uh, scientists' performance and to, to, to evaluate what they do. And do you think that uh, today uh, academy is on the right track? Should we measure everything? For there are people like uh, Peter Higgs who claim that you know in the world of today, in the world of today's science, they wouldn't be able to achieve what they already achieved in the past. Uh, he means that the world. Uh, of science change so much that it measures everything that it's very hard to think. What's your opinion about it? Do you think that academy truly measures too much? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think, I think we have to measure even more. So, uh, in the, uh, especially in Bavaria, Bavarian Academy of Science is, is just now on the way uh, to uh, configure somehow new, uh, newly uh, what, what they will do in, in the future and uh, how, how uh, results are measured and uh, um, that's uh, what I have done just uh, in the last uh, two years, let's say, and uh, the academies uh, are probably many of the academies are probably too old already and uh, we have to uh, look for new young people and uh, this will be done in the future and uh, the academy is a place uh, where uh, we are not dependent on uh, on universities and uh, other places politicians uh, maybe so we can really measure on the basis of uh, independent independence. Uh, Professor Hoffman, my final question would be about the obligation. Is there any obligation uh, at the Bavarian Academy or at the uh, Technical University in Munich to make uh, scientific publications uh, open access? Yes, <clears throat> that's what we uh, intend to do. In, in we have already begun, uh, begin with uh, this open access. Uh, uh, we are collaborating with the Bavarian uh, Central Library. It's one. Of, it's also one of the biggest in the world, and uh, I think open access is uh, uh, really important for uh, the coming years. Not only for us, but also for uh, uh, not developed countries, uh, uh, which uh, cannot uh, buy, for instance, uh, uh, literature in that way. They, they must do it, uh, but uh, they will depend in the future, as uh, their development will depend on uh, the access, uh, open access of uh, the latest literature and. Uh, uh, results in science and uh, there I don't see any way uh, else than open access. Professor Hoffman, thank you very much for mm -hmm. this interesting mm -hmm. uh, conversation. Okay, thank you. <laughs>